Hi, welcome to historical geology class. Normally, we'd be doing this face to face, but because of COVID-19, well, you get me on YouTube. Um, before we really start the class, I would like to at least introduce you to myself, since I'm gonna be your professor for the rest of the semester. And uh, like I said, or maybe I didn't say, my name's Nat Brandis. Uh, I do have a website that has nothing to do with this school, but it does have really, really cool like geology pictures and stuff on it. And so you can go to that website or you can just Google my name and you'll find me. Uh, but a little bit about my, uh, my background. I um, got my bachelor's and master's degrees at um, New Mexico Institute of Mining and Technology, did PhD work at Michigan Technological University, and I've worked at a number of different schools be before coming to uh, Lone Star College. Um, I am married. That's my husband. He is also a geologist. And uh, that's up in uh, the highlands of Scotland. He's, um, he's a Mackay, and this is, says Mackay country, Felche, which means uh, welcome. Uh, so anyway, that's my husband and, uh, and me together. Uh, I do have hobbies other than geology. I do like fast cars. That's one of the fast cars that we own. Um, I also like fishing. If I'm not working, I'm probably fishing somewhere. I enjoy that. That's up in Michigan. I was trying to catch pike there because they're fun. They fight a lot, and so it's, it's really fun to catch them. Um, I also write fiction novels, and that's just for fun, too. Uh, so my life is not only about studying rocks. And I like sports. I, in particular, I like American football, and I love hockey. And that's actually a Michigan Tech game right there. So, you know, I, um, while I'm going to be your professor teaching you about uh, rocks and the history of the planet, I do have other interests. Now, a little bit of advice about my class. Um, I think Gandalf said it best. Um, well, if you do not study, you shall not pass. Uh, basically, study hard for the tests. They can be difficult. They can be challenging. So can the labs and so can the homeworks. But you know what? I'm here to help you with that. So please don't hesitate to ask questions um, to help you pass the class, to help you with anything that you might be confused about. On D2L, I will post um, my, uh, my cell phone number as well as my personal email. So if for some reason you can't email me through the school email, you can always give me a call, you can shoot me a text, you can, uh, you'll have very various ways to contact me if you have questions that you need answered. So let's talk a little bit about the class that you've enrolled in. You have uh, decided to take historical geology, and this is the study of Earth's origin and evolution through time. So we're going to take a look at where the Earth came from, basically the formation of the Earth, and how it has changed over time to become the planet that we are familiar with today. And so we're going to be looking at both physical changes, and then we're also going to look at the life that existed on the planet and how it has changed over time. And you might be thinking, well, why study historical geology? Now, hopefully there's a few of you guys out there who are like, well, I'm going to be a geologist, so this is important. Um, but I know a lot of you are probably just taking this class because you needed a science credit and it sounded interesting. But there are some real reasons to study historical geology. And one of those things is many past events will occur again. So by studying how those past events occurred, what, what happened, what were the results of them, what were the precursors, we can get a better understanding of how our planet behaves and how we should uh, adapt to those changes that can happen. It's also important to recognize we are part of a very complex Earth system. And so by looking at how Earth has changed and evolved over time, we can see where we fit into this complex Earth system. You also might just be curious. Curiosity is a great reason to study things. Many things have been discovered simply because people are like, well, why does that happen? How does that happen? And stuff like that. So you might just be curious about the history of our planet. 
Now, there are a few things that hopefully you remember from physical geology, uh, these like really important principles that uh, you have to remember to do very well in historical geology. And one of those principles is deep time. It's important to understand that Earth is very old, about 4.567 billion years old. Remember, GA stands for Giga Anum, billion years. And what I'm showing here is a geologic time scale, and it's probably a little bit different than others that you've seen. Uh, the way this is set up is that it is to scale. So right there is 4.5 billion years ago. Here's today. And notice some of these time periods are much longer than other time periods. And what I mean by two scale is this actually represents the percent of, uh, of time that each one of those for Earth's uh, entire history. So like the Proterozoic takes up a much bigger percentage of time than the Cenozoic does, right? It's many more years long. So what we're looking at there, there's four and a half billion years ago, here's today. All of these things fit into these three time periods and all of these fit into here. And um, the blue lines right there, that's the ice age, like the current ice age, what we are living in. And yes, we're living in an ice age. By definition, an ice age is where the overall temperature is lower than average and there's big ice sheets in parts of the world. Uh, we are simply in what's called an interglacial, a warmer time period in an overall cooler one. So anyway, there's the ice age, and then this little red line right there is where Homo sapiens shows up. That's where modern humans show up. So we have experienced just a tiny piece of Earth's history, and in this class, we're gonna study all of this vast history of the planet. All right, another important principle to remember when studying uh, any kind of geology is plate tectonics. And this is that Earth's lithosphere is broken into pieces called plates that move over the asthenosphere and cause many geologic phenomena like earthquakes and volcanoes and mountains and stuff like that. And what we're seeing on this map, this is the major plates that we have on Earth. And uh, those are constantly moving around very slowly. They move about as fast as your fingernails grow, so about this far in any given year. So not real far that you would notice, but add that to millions and ultimately billions of years, and these plates can move around quite a bit. So one important thing to remember about Earth is there is nothing permanent but change. And you might be there like, but I learned about uniformitarianism in physical geology. Well, that's true. Uniformitarianism states that the laws that govern Earth, the, the physical laws like gravity and stuff, don't change. But Earth itself does change. Just think about it, the, the pathways of rivers change, sea level changes, where mountains are located changes. And that's what we're saying. Earth is always changing. The only thing that doesn't actually change is that change happens and the rules that govern the way the Earth works doesn't change. Now, when it comes to change, there are different types of change that affect our planet. One is catastrophic change, and this is something that's sudden and incredibly noticeable. So like a meteorite impact, or a landslide, or a massive volcanic eruption, something like that would be catastrophic change. But then we also have subtle change, stuff that's so slow you might not even realize that it's happening. And this would be like the plates moving, right? You're not going to notice this much movement in, you know, a year, um, but you will notice it over many years. There is non-repeating change. This is stuff that, that happens once and probably won't ever happen again. And there's also repeating change, right? Something that happens over and over and over again. 
when we're looking at repeating change, you can have things like that, that are considered periodic events, something that happens in a regular cycle, like tides, right? Every day you have the rise and the fall of tides, back and forth and back and forth. That's a periodic change. But you can also have what's called episodic events. This is where the change repeats itself, but it's not at a regular interval. So, for instance, global sea level rises and falls over all uh, the entire history of our planet, but it doesn't follow a regular cycle, right? Sometimes you'll have a rapid sea level rise and, and rapid fall. Sometimes it'll be really, really slow, right? It's not a regular cycle, but it does ultimately repeat. And so as we go through our um, uh, learning about the history of our planet, we're going to see how all these different kinds of changes that have happened to the planet have shaped it into uh, the modern Earth that we see today. Another important principle to remember in historical geology is the evolution of biological life. And we'll have an entire lecture where, where we will look at how evolution works and, and uh, progresses over time. But basically, evolution is how living organisms and living systems have changed through time. And I have this uh, the classic example that paleontologists use is the evolution of the horse where the horse began as Eohippus, this uh, nice little cat-sized organism about this big, and uh, over time we ultimately get the beautiful big thoroughbreds that we see today. And, um, and later on in the semester we'll look exactly at why and how that happened. And I stole this one because I just love the artist's name, Pookie Horse. Thank you, Pookie Horse. <laughs> All right, so when life um, evolves, the changes that occur in life can be things like the appearance, the actual genetics, um, the function of different uh, parts of the body can change, and even the body chemistry can change over time. And like I said, we have an entire lecture on how this occurs, and so I'll leave the details uh, for when we get to that lecture. Uh, now, the other thing about evolution, what we're going to be doing through the course of the semester, we're going to be looking at a lot of fossils, because the fossils record these evolutionary changes. Now, another important thing to remember about the way the Earth works is we have something called feedback. Feedback is where things play on each other, right? There has been ecologic interaction between the living and non-living realms throughout Earth's history. So there's, there's kind of this, this playback where life does something and the physical part of Earth will respond, will change because of this thing life did. Or the physical part of Earth changes in some way and life changes in response to that. So we have both um, life changing the planet and the planet changing life through time. And it's a really neat part of what we're going to be learning about this semester. Now, if you've had me as a professor before, you know that I finish every one of my lectures with something called the random picture of the day. And that's exactly what it is. It's a random picture that probably doesn't have much to do with geology, but it's just something I'd like to show you and talk about very briefly. And today's random picture of the day are these little dudes. Uh, they're called puffins. And um, uh, this is off uh, the west coast of Scotland, where a lot of puffins nest and raise their young. Their young are called pufflings. And um, they, uh, they walk around there and they actually burrow underground. That's where they have their nests and raise their young. And um, these guys like humans being around because the humans chase away the predatory birds. And what I think is probably the weirdest thing about puffins is their call. 
they don't chirp like normal birds. They kind of moo. They walk around and they make this noise like If you're really curious about it, Google puffins and um, look them up at the Cornell Laboratory of Ornithology. They actually have a puffin song and you can hear what they sound like. So anyway, I look forward to having all of you guys in my class this semester.